Hello, it's Noisy Andrew, and welcome to week two of the Bayswater Station Upgrade video series. This week, we'll see some track laid, some interesting foundation work, um, and retaining walls, and a bridge fall down. But, first of all, let's look at the Leak Street underpass, because that's pretty well done now. So if you remember last video, we saw a crane lifting in these precast arches that make the underpass. So the next thing you're going to do is put a portal on the front of it. And that was the formwork. And of course, you'll want to going to explore inside it. It's great fun looking at new stuff. There's a wheelchair, cycleway, accessibility ramp at the other end. And of course, it's on Leak Street. So there's a leak. I doubt they'll fix this. This is not a major thing. So the next thing we have is a large pile of ballast. Once your ground's compacted, you're going to spread some ballast over the top of it. Uh, there's a few different crews working on this job, um, and one of them were just using a loader, basically, to spread a layer of ballast down. And the other crew had this really cool system with a truck and a loader with an attachment on the front of it. It basically pushes the truck along and spreads a layer of ballast on the ground. The truck driver just has to follow the survey marks. Once you have your ballast down, it's time to lay the sleepers and space them out on top of the ballast. Uh, basically, these guys are doing that. They've got like a little gauge system so they get them all the right distance apart. Once the sleepers are down, you can drag your railway track on top of it. The railway track is held to the sleepers by like a spring clip. I call them pandrols, but I'm pretty sure there's other companies that make this sort of thing as well. This is um, something to deal with the dynamic load on a railway line. Trains rock and roll as they go along. And you want your track fastenings to be able to, to be very strong, but be able to give a little. So these are made out of spring steel, basically. You hammer them in or press them in, and they will fix the track to the sleeper. Uh, once all that's done, you dump a whole lot more ballast on top of it. Um, you can see this bit in this picture here, there's like... Uh, sleepers and track on top of the initial ballast layer and then a whole bunch more ballast dumped on it here. So now you've got all the extra ballast on you need to do something with it. So for this we have a, a machine called a tamper which has like the magic fingers that reaches down between the sleepers and jiggles things around to make sure everything is true and level. This obviously leaves like holes in your ballast where the fingers have poked so then a thing called a ballast regulator comes along and grades, regrades the ballast around the edges and across the top to some degree and then gives it all a damn good sweep with a big rotary brush on the other end of it. There are large piles of old sleepers around and I found myself wondering what will happen to them. I'm guessing they might be reused somewhere out on the country grain network or something like that. Uh, it makes no sense to put them here because why not replace everything here with new stuff. Now we've looked at how railway track is laid, let's talk about foundations and retaining walls. What do you do if you've got a big pile of sand or dirt or some piles of rocks or something that's going to fall somewhere and you want to stop it? You need to retain this to hold it where it is. And at the western end near the Hotham Street Bridge, there is indeed like quite a deep cutting and this dirt needs to be retained. Um, in fact, I've seen a surveyor on the top of it uh, making measurements every couple of days, just making sure it's not moving because while all this work's going on, there's a lot of vibration and disturbance and, you know, it, it, it's dis disturbing. The retaining wall most people probably think of is the big limestone block ones and I would call that a mass or gravity retaining wall where the wall is heavy enough to hold the uh, dirt back uh, just with its own weight. But we're not doing that here. We're doing what's called a piled retaining wall and the piles we're using are called sheet piles. They wouldn't have to be. They could be round logs or concrete, round concrete piles or something like that. And the trick is you need to drive them far enough into the ground so that they are strong enough to stay where you put them. And what we have here is a sheet piling machine and I actually really enjoy how these things work. Basically this machine with two guys can install a piled wall for you, um, which would probably hold back meters of dirt. This one's actually hold, only holding back about a meter. Um, and you look at how long the piles are. I, I, you know, this 
to me looks like it's well over engineered but anyway um the machine picks up the pile there's a little guide piece that um allows it to be inserted next to its previous pile the edges of a sheet pile actually have like a groove in them so that they'll slot into each other and, and lock together you can see there's a short section of sheet pile with some like rebates cut into it so that they can slot it over this beam on the ground to keep everything aligned it's a really really cool system i enjoyed watching this work and if we just sit here quietly you can hear how they push this into the ground this machine has a big vibrating head on it and it basically vibrates the pile into the ground. So now it's time to talk about bridges falling down. The bridge in the Bayswater precinct, uh, well the Bayswater station precinct, has a clearance of 3.8 metres, which I think is 12 and a half bananas for those old fashioned folk. Um, and as such, it catches a truck once in a while. It even has a website dedicated to um, all the people that have been unfortunate enough to forget how high their load is. Um, and it's got like I will link to it in the bottom, but it has a URL called how many days since the Bayswater Bridge has been hit.com or something like that anyway. Anyway, this bridge needed to be removed for the new um, station development. And the way they did it was they covered the road with a bed of sand that was about a metre thick um, so that when the deck uh, was laid on the road, it wouldn't damage the road. They excavated behind the abutments. The abutments are the walls on either end of the bridge that hold up the deck. And then they got into that excavation with two excavators, with two excavators that had rock breaking um, tools on them, and they bashed away at the concrete. And as they chipped at the top, the bridge slowly sank down onto the bed of sand on the bottom. I got there to watch this, along with a lot of other people, uh, quite early in the morning. Um, and they had started before I got there. I, I was there like around about 6 a.m. It was still dark. And um, there was like, already a pretty good start made on the rock breaking like if you lived within a kilometer of the Bayswater station I think you probably would have just may as well have got up and had a cup of tea because there was a lot of hammering going on anyway by about the middle of the afternoon they demolished most of the abutments and the deck of the bridge was sitting quietly on the sand I believe they're going to save part of it and make it an art installation somewhere because the bridge is a celebrity. There's like, there's much love for this dear old bridge. And um, may it rest in peace or pieces. So two weeks ago when I started this project, the plan was just to do montages of the work progress. Anyway, so back on that, <laughs> here is looking east at the West End from the Hotham Street Bridge area. And this was, I think, about day eight overall. And you can see the retaining wall is done. Um, not much change for the next day. 
But then as we go on the following day, you can see we've got some track down. I missed a day here because there was some rain or something. So this is like two days progress in, in like one image, I guess. And here we are on day six of this week. You can see quite a bit of work now. So midway between the Hotham Street Bridge and the station, the Western Station approaches. And this is at the same spot looking east towards the new station. And again the following day. Do you remember what this looked like on about day three or four of the project? You'll need to check the other video to find out. And this is the eastern embankment um, where the lines to Midland and High Wycombe are up near that sound barrier concrete wall. Um, you can see there's an enormous amount of material that's been moved in here to raise the track bed up to the correct level. So I thought we'd finish off with a few snaps of the crowd that came down to watch the Bayswater Bridge removal. A sad day for some of us. Anyway, if you want to follow on what's happening here, please like and subscribe and there'll be another video next week.